If you've ever been curious about wine, or if you find it intimidating, today's podcast is for you. Even if you are not a big wine drinker, this podcast can help you learn more about it so that you can make better choices when hosting dinner parties, attending business dinners, or going on first dates. It is with great pleasure that I introduce today's distinguished guest. She is a trailblazer, an award-winning wine writer, speaker, and consultant whose expertise transcends regions and cultures. Julia Coney's journey in the wine world is nothing short of extraordinary. As the wine consultant for American Airlines, she is redefining the skies as we know them, one glass at a time. Julia doesn't stop there. She is the founder of Black Wine Professionals, a driving force behind a movement that aims to amplify the voices of multifaceted Black professionals in the wine industry. She is the wine consultant for Sweet July Magazine and just a catalyst for change. Her work has been featured in numerous print and digital publications. And I need you to know that I'm not sure if I had more fun, I've ever had more fun doing a podcast interview as I had doing this one. I hope you enjoyed this interview as much as I did. Okay, Julia, we are finally <laughs> bringing I, what I feel like is our epic wine conversations to the podcast. And I I want to get into how you got into wine, but I feel like I need to tell this story. Today we're <laughs> going to be just talking about sort of how knowing wine, um, how complicated it is, the barriers, all those things. But I want to tell this quick story about how I did an internship back when I was in college at Enterprise rent car in the loss <laughs> prevention department. And I loved my boss and I had just turned 21. And so the boss that I had, Chris was her name. She took me and I think one or two other people wine tasting in Sonoma. And I just Googled it before we got on because I was like, I wonder, it was Ravenswood Winery. Was oh, like, wow. It back was in the, the one, day. Back in the day. I guess they like closed down. They got They closed, whatever. yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it was like, you know, just going tasting. But that was the one that stuck out in my mind. And I remember tasting all the different wines, being confused. I never really had wine before, but she took us, she took us tasting around. And then she used to have a, like pool parties at her house and she was really into wine. Cut to... Later that year, I got an internship um, sponsored by Essence Magazine, but at Unilever. And every week, Essence would do these events with the interns. It was the Summer of Beauty internship. Long story short, one of the dinners was with the founder, Ed Lewis, uh, and I think he was the CEO of the t at the time. So it's the CEO of Essence. It's Susan Taylor. Like, it's just all these bosses. And there's just like four young black interns doing this program and I'm sitting next to Ed Lewis and that big massive wine list drops <laughs> down on the table and he says to me why don't you choose the wine for the table and I was like chest puffing up like I got this you know because I had had that experience with Chris and that choosing the wine for the table I don't think I could have gone wrong, but he was so impressed with me. We talked all night. I ended up getting free tickets to Essence Fest, flew me out, hotel, like floor seats, backstage. Uh, I mean, everything. And I never forgot how in that moment I felt like wine, even the little knowledge that I had <laughs> got me so far. And that was the inspiration that like kept me tasting, kept me into it. And it really is just like this unspeakable thing that can like, it's just like a, I don't know, what is it? Like a language that- It's a connector. Speak. It's a yes. community. It's, it's communal, right? Yes. Why you usually drink wine with people. Yes. That's how most people, it's a connector. Okay. And so for me, I like to say right now, wine is the new golf course. Okay. When Tiger Woods came out, it's mm -hmm. like everybody black was like, whoa, let, let's go to the golf course, right? <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> let's go play golf. Right. But wine is a thing now. It is, yeah. it is not, it's not slowing down, even as sales of wine and people drinking less wine. Yeah. I think people are also drinking better wine. Okay. That's the, okay. So Julia, before we get into this sort of like 101, mm -hmm. 201, I want you to tell us, how did you get into wine? 
So I grew up in Houston and okay. uh, went to college in Texas. And I was always, I wasn't a big drinker. My, you know, my family didn't drink. They're not against drinking, but like church stuff, you know, they're like, <laughs> we just don't drink. Right. And I was a huge margarita person. Like margarita is like my jam. Give me like a fresh one, a frozen one. Just give me a margarita. Okay. And I started working for lawyers outside of college. And even though I had studied abroad in France, in Paris, wine is everywhere. So it's not like a big thing. You go to lunch and as a student, it was cheaper to get a salad, an omelet and a half carafe of wine than to order that with a soda. Wow. <laughs> so right. you're conserving money, right? My parents right. are like, you should be conserving money. So I just got into wine, but I wasn't thinking about it as a career. I wasn't drinking well. I was just drinking whatever was on the menu. Mm-hmm. Came home, got a job working at a law firm. And the attorney I worked for, he had just been to Napa. This is 1999. Wow. And all the boxes are in front of my desk. And we're talking old school Napa. Camus, Claude Duvall, Opus yeah. One, where you just kind of walk in and go and have a taste and it didn't cost you hundreds of dollars. Right. And I was like, why is all this wine in front of my desk? I can't work. And he was like, didn't you study in Paris? Like wine is everywhere there. I'm like, yeah, but it's not like this. Right. And he had a barbecue at his house. I mean, mm. Texas barbecue, brisket, ribs, all these amazing barbecued foods. And he paired it with those wines. Wow. And he sat me down and tasted these amazing wines in 1999. 1999. Yeah. And I was like, oh, I'm hooked. What is this? Why yeah. are there cherries? How did the cherries get in this flavor? I couldn't understand right. thing. And he was like, do you, he was like, I'm going to bring you a column by a woman named Dorothy Gator. And she writes for the Washington, uh, Wall Street Journal. Okay. And it's called Tastings with her husband. And mm-hmm. I see the photo and it was every Sunday and it was a black woman. And I was just shocked. Wow. <laughs> black woman. And this is 99. They had started the column in 98. And I see every week I'm reading these stories of why. And so I was like, you know what? I need to go to this Napa place, Bob. Bob, you need to help me go to this Napa place. <laughs> yes. And he gave me my bonus early so I could go to Napa. Come and this on, is when Bob. you didn't have GPS. This is like, you're going from here. You go yeah. get on this br- freeway. You go drive this highway. Right. And I went and just knocked on doors and they wow. were like, Oh yeah, Bob, Bob, Bob said you were coming to taste. Let's taste. And then I would, yes. I came home after that and was still so curious. I was drinking wine. I was going to the tastings at the Specs liquor store in Houston every Friday night, trying to find what I liked, what I didn't like, what I could yep. afford. That part. Budget. <laughs> what I could afford. <laughs> mm-hmm. And I went to work and I said, Bob, okay, Napa's done this. I've been studying California for six months. They're inspired by Bordeaux. I think I need to go to Bordeaux. And he was like, yeah, you should go to Bordeaux. Wow. And I said, but how do I get there? Like, cause I don't know. I right. know French well, but it's Bordeaux. It's not Paris. Right. And he said, will you fit? You should join one of those like cycling groups and do a trip that they take you to Bordeaux and you drink wine and cycle. And that's what I did. Wow. <laughs> that's what I did. Okay. In See, 2000. In 2000. I, I said, okay. I'm just going to join this group. It was a luxury travel company. He got his travel agent to book it for me. And I remember just being in Bordeaux at these chateaus, drinking all these wines. Wow. And it's kind of like this full circle moment because I look in, you know, growing up, you grew up in Houston, Beyonce. And I have had those wines. I've had the Petruses. Mm-hmm. I've had the Marcos, the Latours, the big, Flex. those wines, the wines that are like the epic I have had them at their origin, not like here. And so I came back with all this wine. It's it's kind of crazy. Okay. So we, we, (laughs) you guys, we are going to talk about all things wine and how it is communal and maybe even how just knowing whether you drink or not. And I recognize as somebody who is right sizing their relationship with wine um, and just about everything in my life. But I feel, I do feel like it doesn't hurt to know what's going on. And so Julia, I'm going to, we're going to start very basic here and Mm -hmm. we're going to just span out. And then I do, I hope we do make time to go back over those like fancier name wines that you threw out because we see all the celebs having them, or maybe we don't, or we don't know what they look like. And we like, how much do they cost? And are they even really good? So I want to just, I'm seriously going to say wine is pleasure. It is culture. And so many believe that it makes food taste better, but wine can be incredibly intimidating. And so in a very one-on-one way, what I understand, Julia, is that there are five different types of wine, red, white, rosé, sparkling, and fortified. Did I get that right? Yes. Okay. But is it... The difference of it is you can have a white grape okay. make a red wine 
yeah or a white wine and that's how you have pinot noir so it's yes there is that okay, but pinot but noir <laughs> can make a rosé got it so it's this thing where it's like these are the types these are just kind of like the basics but they are made from two basic kinds of grapes and when you say white you mean the green ones right so yeah i mean the green ones the green but ones the, but, they, but they call them white they call them uh, white um and so can you talk us through some of the types so give me some of the most popular red wines who what are some reds, Pinots, Cabs, Merlots? Like, what are the top most popular red wines? Well, Who likes what typically? So Cabernet, uh, okay. for most of us in America, it comes from France. But okay. we know it from California, right? Mm-hmm. And Cabernet, all grapes are different based on where they're grown. Okay. So a Cabernet from California will taste very different than a Cabernet from Bordeaux, France, because okay. of climate. We're talking climate. Climate matters, right? Right. So when you're... Usually people have Cabernet in California. It's kind of big. It's kind of fruity. Usually mm-hmm. they add a lot of oak. But if you taste a super, super dry cab mm-hmm. from France, you're like, oh, I really, really don't like this because I'm maybe used to California. But right. also tasting these wines that are meant to go with food, you might not always like them. Right. Okay. So <laughs> cab Cabernet is a red wine. Is it meant to go with food? I think all wine is meant to go with food. Okay. But is it a drink alone wine? A Cabernet? No. Not in my opinion. You don't think it's true? Okay. No. What do you say big? What do you mean by big? See, this is the thing. When you, people in the okay. wine industry, when you check <laughs> it's big wine. <laughs> when you, the, Cabernet is known for tannins, right? So when you okay. taste these, when I call a big wine, it sometimes seems like you could taste, like you're licking a napkin and you <laughs> are smacking. That's the only way I can oh, say it. That's what a tannin yes. feels like. Yes. It's like, wow. And your mouth gets dry and okay. you kind of like, what is going on? Mm-hmm. And you're like, I don't like this wine. This wine is too dry for me. You're like, that is not, that is big, big, okay. right? And the alcohol percentage on it is big. You flip the bottle over, you see 14%, 15%, 16%. Those are what we call big. Okay. Right. What are some but of the big red wines? Zinfandel. Zinfandel. You know, yeah. Right. You're so, getting into so, Zinfandel. Yeah. So big reds are going to be Cabernet Zinfandel. Yes. And also can be Malbec. Depends on where it's grown. Yes, Malbec. Yeah. Could, I, you know. I used to like Malbec, but it's too big for me. <laughs> yeah. But that, but, and it's even bigger where it originates in Cahors, France. A lot of people think Malbec originates in Argentina because that's what we know. It actually mm-hmm. originated in France. It went to uh, Argentina when there was a disease in France that was destroying all the grapes. Okay. It went and so now in Argentina is really known for it, right? Okay. It is big from Argentina, it's bigger in France. Like it's Got just it. heavy, it's weighty, it's dry. But they eat it with a lot of red meat. They okay. eat it with game and venison. So you're talking about foods that actually complement that wine. Right. This isn't a summer Malbec is not something we're sipping on the porch in the summer. No. No. Okay. Unless, no. I think if you're in the summer and you're in the south, you just go inside <laughs> with your air condition with on. Your AC and, and have your Malbec your, and your yeah, Cabernet. Okay. Yes. So those are our big reds. What are some mm-hmm. of the, so it, let's step down. Where are we stepping down to like medium? Medium. Are, you can pino, think Pinot Noir. You think Pinot Noir is, is medium? In, the, in, a, in a certain area. Yeah. Right. Okay. If you go, if you think Pinot Noir in France yeah. It, it, where is it? Re- Burgundy, France. Burgundy. It's colder. It's wetter. Yeah. It's got cooler climate. Mm-hmm. Doesn't get enough sun like it does in certain parts of California. So once again, you're getting a drier wine. Okay. A medium, L- pinot. medium, medium Pinot. I like to, I say Pinot for a lot of people is a gateway into a bigger wine. Agreed. But it, right. But Pinot, pinot to Noir, me, yeah. Pinot it's Noir. Can go, it's a safe red, but it can go with fish. It can go okay. with chicken. Yes. It's the whole breaking of the myth, red wine with red meat. Right. No red wine doesn't go with like a seafood dish. Okay. So where does Merlot fall? Because I feel like Merlot is just like the, it's like, the I, big, like I like, like the, Merlot it's a house in the middle. Wine. It's like, I like Merlot in the middle between Pinot Noir, Merlot and Cabernet. I love Merlot. Okay. I think Merlot is a beautiful wine when it's done very well. Okay. Who does very like, who does my favorite Pinot, my favorite Merlot right now is uh, Mount Veter. Uh, okay. Merlot out of California, out, okay. literally out of Mount Vener. The Mount V E E D E R Mount Vener. Okay. It's okay. it's just a beautiful Merlot. It's just elegant. It's soft. It's not. Too, it's just all the tannins work. You can actually sip that Merlot and just have like a little cheese, a little crackers. You don't need something else. I just think it's so, so well done. Okay. So, and then if you go into France, mm-hmm. you can have Merlot where it originated it's on the right bank in Pomerol. Merlot is king. Okay, so. Pinot Noir. Are there any light reds 
that you would recommend? Or is, I, there, is there anything lighter than Pinot Noir? Which I do think that's one of my favorite reds. That's that like I I think when you, you're talking lighter reds, now we're going to Italy. Italy is known to me for these beautiful lighter style red wines, right? Okay. A narrow Davola can be one of those. It's in between. It's like right to me before Pinot Noir, and mm-hmm. it's just lighter in style. So when you drink it, it has like a lightness about it, and it could be sipping on those wines where you're like, oh, okay, this is not too bad. I don't need a lot of things with this. Okay. And what is, what's your favorite chillable red? Because I do want to say, I do feel like there are some people who are putting wine in the fridge straight up. You know, I've been to some places where you're pulling a Merlot out of the fridge, you're pulling a cab out of the fridge, Mm -hmm. but like, are there chillable reds and should reds even be in the fridge? Reds, all wine should be chilled. Okay. Okay. All wine should should be chilled. All wine should be chilled. Okay. The key is you have to take them out early enough to serve them with a slight chill. White wine is usually served too cold and red wine is usually served too warm. Mm. Too cold, you can't smell it. You don't get nuances. So if you pour wine straight from the refrigerator and you have all that condensation on the glass, you yeah. need to wait 10, 15, 20 minutes for all that to to go off so yeah. you can actually taste the wine. Because otherwise you're just drinking and there's no flavor. I know. And then it's all tasting the same at this point. <laughs> it's all tasting the same. It's giving house, it's giving house wine. It's giving house wine. When it's <laughs> red and it's too warm, Mm-hmm. then it you can't see all the taste all the nuances you just taste dryness you just taste fruit you don't taste any elegance because it is too warm oh okay so before we move on to white <laughs> before we move on yes. to white um actually i'm just gonna move on to white and i'll save my question so what are gonna be some of my big white wines think if you're once a lot of this is white wine based on region california a lot of people say they don't like chardonnay right they're like it's too big too oaky too buttery those are actually winemaker choices Mm. so if you get a lot of new oak in Mm -hmm. wine you're getting a lot of that buttery something called malolactic fermentation because wine is science it is a living breathing thing that causes you not to like that minimal oak no oak, unoaked, as some people call it, you can get the same Chardonnay without all those characteristics. But that's okay. a heavier, that's why when you, like I say, if you're going to California, sometimes you can, depends on where you're going, they will have a, a Chardonnay from 12% to 14%. It just mm. depends on winemaking styles and what you want to drink. Got it. Like for me, I love Albarino, which is a white wine from Spain and Portugal. I think they do very great jobs. If you like something light and fruity, refreshing, Mm-hmm. Like some people like New Zealand Sauvignon Blanc, right? Yeah. I all, New Ze- all New Zealand Sauvignon Blanc is not grapefruity. It depends. It's literally like wine is one of those things. The more you learn, the more you realize you don't know anything. And right. you got to keep learning <laughs> right. because everything is so different. And I think right. a lot of times consumers, you know, we all start that way. We want wine to be the be all end all of what we think. Right. But everything is determined by seasonality winemakers choices at that time right. what's happening in the vineyard what they can sell how much so it's right. all these little nuances that make up wine and wine understanding got it so I just because I in every category I kind of want to just give people something to walk away with mm-hmm. so you got in your your big whites are going to be your your California Chardonnays those heavy those ones that are oaked yes when we step down I think lighter you were saying like a New Zealand Sauvignon Blanc. I think Sauvignon Blanc, right? You have mm-hmm. like, that's what people know you can really, is readily available. Cause I'm always talking like, what is people, what are people drinking? Right. Yeah. And then you can go like the Italian whites, like any like region somewhere like in Northern Italian makes mm-hmm. really great. Like think about Pinot Grigio, right? Yeah. There's ranges of Pinot Grigio. So For you sure. want this lighter effervescent style. So I always tell people when they're stuck, if you're really trying to get into wine, pick a country, pick a region and stick with it for one month. Yeah, and try a different wine from that region. Go to a store where you can actually trust somebody Mm -hmm. to talk with you through those wines, not just trying to make a sale because then you don't want to go back. Then you feel like you're not being heard, right? Because you're saying, I want to try this and just make notes. You like take your phone, take a photo of the label. I encourage people to take photos of labels because sometimes you'll have a wine and then you go back to the store and you're trying to find it. And people like me who've worked in stores, like, I'm sorry, do you, can you tell what the label is? Right. Cause you're, that's, that's a key too, but spend time, just say, I want to learn wine. I'm a pick, I'm a pick, just say if you're in the U S I'm a pick California, Oregon, Washington, or Virginia, a state, right? I'm a pick okay. a state. I'm a pick a country. And every week I'm going to try something new. So that smart. is very hard. 
Because that's the way I was taught to learn wine is try something new every week. Yeah, I think that's doable. So, okay, let's jump to rosé. I feel Mm -hmm. like everybody loves rosé. It feels, it's it's drinkable. It's, it's cute. It's pink. What is rosé? What is, what is rosé? So rosé is basically, they're taking a red wine. Mm -hmm. And they're actually, sometimes they can leave it on the skin to make it, if you ever go and you see a really, really almost red wine color, but it's a deep rosé, right? Mm -hmm. That that's a rosé or they can make it lighter in style, leave less time on the skins. Mm -hmm. Sometimes they'll ferment it with, with the seeds and the skin. So you're getting, it depends on the region, what that grape looks like. And that's why I bring up Pinot Noir because Pinot Noir is a red grape that can make a white or a red or a rosé wine. Mm, okay yeah flexible that's my girl flexible like that's why i love pinot noir i love pinot noir <laughs> and chardonnay for that too because yeah. chardonnay can make a steel wine and it can make chardonnay sh- based champagnes which yes. i personally love right okay but with rosé you can decide what style do you mm-hmm. want the lighter style like you know everybody know provence rosés yeah but in provence and we think rosés are just for summer you can actually age rosés but it mm. all depends on the producer and where you're getting it and was it actually made to be aged. Sometimes we don't all wine, most of the wine, 85% that is sold is meant to be drank within the time you get it in 14 to 15 months. Okay. Everything's <laughs> not supposed to be. Everything is not supposed to be aged. Okay. So because we are being, we are being girlies on this podcast. Yes. Rosé is popular. And I feel it's like we, we said we were going to talk about this <laughs> because whether we want to admit it or not, when you're doing one of these big fancy dinners or something like that with somebody who knows wine, like it or not, I do feel like people are judging you. Oh, they and, do. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. It's like, do you know? So <laughs> what, like, would you order a rosé at a nice dinner? Absolutely. I would order, but it I, for me, I would order a Pinot Noir based rosé to compliment the people who are having beef. I always say rosé and fillet, and that includes a sparkling rosé. Mm-hmm. I love like a rosé with a, with like a flank steak, hanger steak, filet mignon. Yes. I would put a, a rosé with that, right? Okay. And then I would have a lighter style of rosé, maybe uh, you know one from Provence or mm-hmm. one from the Rhone, which has Grenache in it, right? A lighter yeah. that can actually go with your chicken, your fish you know, or whatever you decide to eat on the lighter style fare. So rosé can, I've had really had dinner dinners where there was the entire dinner was all rosés. Lovely. Okay. So yeah. now we know. All right. Sparkling. <laughs> I feel like this is going to be the help we need. Sparkling. I feel like we could do a whole podcast on sparkling <laughs> because, yes. because, and, and this is something I had to learn. So everything is not champagne. Like no. everything sparkling is not champagne there's like there have been times where I have gone out to dinner and and sometimes at the end of dinner I go you know what I just want to have a glass of champagne and they will not give me the champagne because they are like it is more expensive and they'll Mm -hmm. bring me the cava or the prosecco talk us through sparkling wine please okay so champagne is a sparkling wine but not all sparkling wines are champagne so champagne (laughs) has to come from the champagne region of France okay it literally the main two cities Rams and Epernay in those in that commune you have different villages and of those villages the main three grapes that we use and people know chardonnay pinot noir and mounier you might see pinot mounier and mounier but you can make champagne from eight grapes they mainly make it from the three so that's why i really don't kind of get into the other geeky part of that (laughs) until like somebody really asked me right so that is those are laws right so that is why champagne can only be called champagne with that caveat if you say i see corbell says champagne i see andre says champagne those were grandfathered in before the law happened in the 70s to keep that name champagne on the label. Okay. They can't do that right now. You can't okay, call so it a Corbell and, and Andre, those are they, not champagnes. They are <laughs> okay. California sparkling wines that were grandfathered in by, before, before before this law. law happened. Okay. So, okay, let's just say, because champagne, if you look at it on the menu, most times it is the most expensive thing. Yes. I don't, okay, I don't want to, because we're talking about budget, what Mm -hmm. are some other beautiful sparkling wines, if I like champagne, that I could be drinking? If you like champagne, the key thing you have to look up for on the sparkling list, if it says method traditionnel, method champenois, because champagne goes through two fermentations, and that is, it goes through one in 
the barrel, the oak, the steel, whichever the, the winemaker decides, and the second happens in the bottle. That's where you get the cage and the cork for champagne. So okay. that's called the traditional method. So mm-hmm. when you're looking at those, you're looking for ones that really do that. Mm-hmm. So for champagne, they also have a legal law requirement to lay down on the side, on the leaves, as they call it, for 15 months minimum in that bottle. Okay. So That's... when you see method champenois, usually people are trying to mimic that law. They try to mimic champagne for that. Okay. The so difference... It didn't grow there, but it we did, did the it. method. We did the method. So that's why you have Ferrari Trento, Trento Doc, beautiful, that's the one that sponsored Formula One. Mm-hmm. They make one. They're the first to do the champagne method in Italy, uh, in the northern, in Trento Doc region. Okay. In Cava, Cava, can, they don't use the same grapes. So when we talk about champagne method, there's the method of double, fer- the second fermentation, and mm-hmm. there's the method of using the same grapes. In okay. Cava, they're using their local Spanish grapes a lot of times. So okay. your Zarella, your Pate, all these other Spanish grapes they're using. So you want to look, if you want something so similar, you want to ask what grapes are in this bottle. Because if mm. it has Chardonnay and Pinot Noir, it's going to be a little similar. Okay. You can't duplicate soil in these regions. So that's right. also champagne is chalk, right? Yeah. A lot of these other places are clay. But one of the key things I want to say, Prosecco is made in a tank. Okay. And it goes through a different method and it doesn't see a secondary fermentation. So it is not made in a champagne one method. Okay. It's Prosecco because we're talking about being judged. What's up with Prosecco? I Okay. So Prosecco gets a bad rap. And on this, I got to go for a little tangent. Okay. Prosecco gets a bad rap as bad as Moscato Dosti gets a bad rap. Okay. Because there is a lot of bad Prosecco and there's a lot of bad Moscato. Right. And right. And, right. Because there's so much bad in this category, the yes. category in itself gets a bad rap. But a good, I've, had a, I've had beautiful Proseccos and Moscatos. Yes, exactly. So yeah. Altenev, which makes one of my favorite Proseccos, but honestly, that Prosecco is twenty five dollars. Okay. Pretty much, right? Yeah. But you could get another Prosecco for ten. Did you were you the person that told me you like Prosecco from uh Kirkland? What is it? Costco? I if you go to mix a mimosa. Okay. <laughs> so if I'm gonna make a mimosa Do not use champagne, please don't do that. Okay. But you're saying the Costco Prosecco hits for a hits. Mimosa. A mimosa, okay. a bellini, anything like any of those fruit, like, you know, you want to okay. make a French 75, but you don't want to use champagne, okay. any of those cocktails, because to me, champagne on its own, you're just ru- ruining something you're ruining like, it. you're ruining yeah. history. <laughs> get yourself, right? a, get the Prosecco from it's Costco like a, and co- make your- The Costco Prosecco is phenomenal for that. Like, I, I always tell people, that's what you want, or you're having a party, you're mm-hmm. on a budget, you're having people over, and mm-hmm. you just want something sparkling. I think that is a very well made for the price okay fair enough now fortified wines what what is that that's the ports and ports they're the- also they're 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 actually part of them are distilled so okay. and they're aged so they're they're looking you're looking for this beautiful distillation that happens and so there's different methods like the solera method and you're making like a sherry and all the leaves these are really used for after dinner drinks that's what i'm thinking is that aperitifs is that what they're is that aperitifs a little before or a little after they're okay. really kind of not meant to really go with like your your, your meals okay. like right I like them as cheese pairings at the end of the meal because I'm more of a savory person and like cheese as a dessert compared Mm -hmm. to chocolate. Got it. So these are like when they, when the, at those fancier restaurants, when the dessert menu comes out, that these are going to be on that list typically. Also, you're going to see Demi Sec champagne on that list. Oh yeah. I love Demi Sec. So Demi Sec. mm -hmm. Demi Sec on the sweeter side, right? It's on the sweeter side. There's seven levels of sweetness in champagne from bone dry to super sweet. Demi mm-hmm. Sec is right b- before the super sweet. The super okay. sweet is called Deux. There's one mm-hmm. level or more sugar even after the Demi Sec. <laughs> My goodness. But yes, it's yeah. really, it's a lot of sugar. And okay. so you're using those to like complement the cheese, complement the, the sweet dessert. So that's why you don't see them really on the list when they hand you a list under Wines by the glass, wine by the bottle. They're they're your they're your dessert menu wines. Okay. 
All right. So I feel like you covered a lot of the terminology and I'm just going to go through my list. And if there's anything I didn't cover, okay. I feel like we talked about dry. What does it mean when somebody says something is dry? Is that the like napkin looking that you mentioned? When you're okay. So when you taste wine, you taste with all parts of your mouth, right? Okay. When that's one of the reasons there's certain glass shapes because the okay. way the ball, the barrel hits, has the wine pour on your tongue, you get a different sensation. Mm. So glasses are a thing for wine people because of this reason, right? Mm. Like for me, anything sparkling I drink, Prosecco, Cava, uh, Champagne, I never put it in a flute. Flute, no. You can no flutes. To, you can already shut down the whole. <laughs> no flutes. You, you're in. <laughs> You're ending life as we know it because we, love us, we love us a good champagne flute. Why are you not? And you told me this a while ago because we did a tasting <laughs> with my mom, a champagne tasting for her birthday. Yes. But why are we not putting it in a flute? Because champagne is still a wine and mm. you want to smell it. You want to swirl it. You want okay. to like get all the aromas and all the aromatics. So when you taste it, you actually understand what you're tasting. So this is a real boss move. This is what I'm saying. When you're at these dinners and you get ready after that big six figure check, when they, when you order your champagne, you just want to say politely, I like, can I have a white wine glass? <laughs> and the yes. restaurant is the game changer. Yes. Every restaurant will go, Oh, okay. You're and that, they oh. will, you're the, they will look at you different. They will come. <laughs> I, I have it happen all the time. And sometimes mm -hmm. most people don't know I'm in wine. I just go like everybody yeah. else to eat and yeah. I, they bring it and I order a bottle of champagne or order a bottle of sparkling and they bring mm -hmm. flutes. And I was like, Oh no, no, no. Oh, no but no, now no. I just order it when I order the bottle yes. of champagne. Please don't even, don't even yes. play with me. Okay. So dry fruity. F fruity means you actually can really taste those fruits, right? Okay. You're like, Oh, did I taste did, did I taste lemon? Did I taste cherry? That's like okay. the citrus, right? Like you, oh my goodness, this smells like melon, okay. right? Like a honeydew yes. melon, a cantaloupe. Yeah. You're getting all those flavors. And that is really based on climate, weather, soil, and what it, did they use stainless? How long was it stainless? How long did they ferment it? Did they open barrel? Did they punch it? It gets in the weeds. Like, okay. that's why I say it, but it's also, tell, I tell people, you might try a wine with no mm -hmm. food and go, I don't like that wine. Mm. And you try it with food and wine changes food and food changes wine. So right. then that wine you think you didn't like, you actually like it with something. Okay. Savory. When somebody says they, I really want something savory. What does that mean? Savory think you rich, right? You want to taste yeah. something like fatty, savory, like meaty, like you like yeah. almost like want to chew with their teeth, mm. like that yeah, savory like, component. Right. Yeah. Or then like salty, like you get, that's what, when, Wine people love this term minerality. I hate saying yeah. that word. Oh, yeah. minerality, right? If you think about minerality, if you were a kid, like I was, mm -hmm. and you were, went somewhere and it was rocky, and mm -hmm. you licked a rock, mm -hmm. That's what that is mean. minerality. Minerality. That is salty. Okay. That's what it is. Salty, savory. Got it. Um, what uh, Some fancy words we hear in wine, it's got a good finish. What does that mean? Okay. So you ever taste something, and all of a sudden it just goes and evaporates real quick? Yeah. It's, it That's was what, there and now it's gone. No, it's gone. We, so we say it has a long finish. It's after oh, you swallow it, you still, still on your tongue. It's still, oh, honey. <laughs> yes. Right? <laughs> okay. It's got a long finish. It got a long finish. Okay. Okay. <laughs> um, and then the final one that I want to cover is nose. What does that mean? I know that's like wine jargon, but like, oh, that's so a great nose. So a lot of times what no, nose actually means when you put your nose in a wine glass. Sometimes when we are tasting wine or we go to the restaurant and you see people put their nose in it, their nose is actually above the rim of the glass. Mm -hmm. I literally want you to put the nose in the glass above your nose where the top of the wine glass touches your nose for you can actually smell that wine. See, and I'm glad you're sharing this with us because if we are at this fancy dinner and it's like, you got your whole nose in the glass and it's and, like, mm -hmm. yes, yes. It's your glass. <laughs> <laughs> Do your thing. Okay. Do your thing to really, and that's why you swirl wine, right? Yes. Swirling wine is aerating. That's putting oxygen in to actually bring out all those nose flavors. And yeah. when you put your nose above it, you can get a smell. But when you actually put your nose in that glass, you're like, oh. oh. So now your, your mind starts. I think that smells like cherries. Okay, okay. Does that sound like Bing cherries or regular cherries? Does that sound like, you know, Marchinelle cherries? Okay. Okay. Your mind goes back to things, you know, that's why you also have to be curious with food 
because mm-hmm. food and wine go together and your curiosity of eating helps you become a better wine person. I can tell people with a great wine palate based on what they eat. Ooh. Okay. Now. Just because you said that, we're going to move to (laughs) the second part of this podcast, which is the fancy dinner that we just got um, invited to. So I, Julia, I can't tell you how many people reach out to me and say, oh my God, my boss or the owner of the company, I got invited to the home. I got invited to the restaurant. So we're going to just say someone gets invited to the restaurant Mm -hmm. And I want you to talk me through this entire dinner process. And I got my questions ready because (laughs) this is anxiety inducing that massive wine list. There's the unfamiliar, unfamiliar ritual. um, When there's this tasting, the swirl, the sniff, what am I supposed to say? What if I don't like it? So I just want to start from the very beginning that wine list gets dropped on the table or it's already there. It's Mm -hmm. like 14, 15 pages. What is, what is happening with that? And I want you to talk (laughs) us through the difference between ordering a bottle and ordering a glass. But usually when I get that big list, what's happening? So there's by the glass wines, right? For people Mm -hmm. to try, maybe they don't want a whole bottle of a wine because they don't know it. Right. But it's actually, cheaper to buy mm-hmm. wine by the bottle because if you find something you like now you've spent $14 on the glass in the bottle if you multiply that times five because there's five glasses of wine in every 750 milliliter average wine bottle you are spent more money than you had on the bottle okay. I like to tell people if you know you're doing a dinner for work especially when I, I deal with a lot of like black corporate women go google that menu before you get to the restaurant that's the key Okay. Most people now have the wine list on the, on the website. Okay. Go and Google the list. Mm-hmm. And from that, you only need to choose three wines. So have in your mind that you're going to choose three wines, a okay. sparkling, a white, and a red. Right. And here's the kick. Study those wines. Mm-hmm. Make sure the restaurant has those wines. Call them and say, I'm doing a dinner. Because wine people, especially, you know, the snobby ones, like mm-hmm. to prove people wrong. <laughs> that's what they do and it, it irritates me that's the game what they do like oh they yeah. don't know anything but if you can talk just on those three mm-hmm. then you you won the dinner you don't have to talk about the whole book no you don't have to you just give you a sparkling okay. and just say if you're gonna pick a cava oh you picked you uh you picked uh why you know why you picked this over prosecco oh well this cava was made in the traditional method in spain and i just really want to try this great done that's it that's yeah. it you're done this right? kava was done in the traditional yes. method and exact, yes. and everybody's looking like, Oh my goodness. Okay. So then just say you pick a Sauvignon Blanc because mm-hmm. that's an easy white to go with so many things on a menu, but okay. you don't pick one from New Zealand. You pick one from the Loire Valley. That's called Sancerre and everybody Girl, at the table will be like, to... Oh, what? you picked the Sancerre. You didn't go to New Zealand. You went over here to France, the originator of this. Right. Come on. And, and why did you pick this Sancerre? Oh, you know, Sauvignon Blanc is just from France. It's just easy. It just goes with so many things. It goes it with does. the appetizers we're having and it guess, goes with the entrees. I feel like Sancerre is quite so, possibly one of the sexiest white wines ever made. And I was I, I was in the Loire in October. And let me tell you, it is <laughs> like, I was like <laughs> oh, yeah. First time there, know, I was like, oh, like, and do you know, heaven. this is this is you know how I learned about Sancerre? How? Christian, Christian Gray from. 50 shows oh, our favorite wine. book. What about, yeah. The wine <laughs> list in that book is just like, I highlighted every wine in the book and all the classical music. <laughs> this man knew his wines. Knew his wines. I, I was like, he just, everything that he says, I'm trying. And then I tried to sense air and I was like, oh my goodness. Okay. Yeah, that, and then your red. What's your, your red? red? You go p- Pinot Noir. Yes. Yeah, see, do a Pinot I feel Noir, like right? I the cheat codes. This is all the stuff that I typically this is, yes. order. And also, too, here's where I always tell people. If somebody say, oh, you're picking a Pinot Noir, I love California wine, you go to Sonoma. Sonoma mm. has cooler climate, ocean breezes. Pick one from Sonoma Coast. That's all you have to do. Don't pick one from Napa. It's going to be rich, ripe. And then yeah. you didn't go to Oregon because Oregon. somebody told you they like California. Right. So now you're giving them a California Pinot Noir from Sonoma, and you have it right there. Okay. So... We have ordered our wine Mm -hmm. and there's this ritual because I just, I really want you to help us with this. I feel like you order the wine and the person comes out and they just like, they show you the bottle. What is that about? When you look at a label, it's not only showing you the grape, 
is showing you where it's from. And it's also mm-hmm. showing you most of the time the year. Sometimes the label is the year is on the back and everything. So what it wine is determined by years. What mm-hmm. is happening to the climate during that year? Okay. So sometimes there are great years in wine. Like 2018 around the world was an epic year for wine. Like for me, I have a champagne budget because 2018 champagnes that I plan to buy in the next two years okay. are going to be the ones I'm laying down for like 15 years to like okay. pop open like 65, 70 year Come old, on. because they're yeah. going to be those wines, right? The year determines what was happening in the vineyard at that time. So okay. you're looking at it and you see this label and it also gives you information. It's California. Is it Oregon? But where in Oregon? Is it Willamette Valley? Okay. Is that L.O. Amity Hills? So it just gives you location. And the reason why I want you to take a photo of it. So when you go back home, you just study, what does that mean? Right. So we order it. The person brings it out. They show it to you. And, and you say, let just... me take a photo of the label. Okay. Before okay. they take the bottle away. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. It's like, zip. okay. So now they come back and mm-hmm. our glasses are out and they do that little taste. Taste. Yes. What? So I will admit, I, I kind of know what I'm doing, but I feel like I've just watched other people. Mm-hmm. When they do the taste, number one, why? And number two, how? How do I, okay. you know? The reason for the taste is you want to see, is that bottle good? Why is a living, breathing thing? You can get 12 bottles of wine and two not be great. Two be uh, like they're oxidized. The fruit is expired because it's a living product. You yeah. want to make sure there's nothing like TCA where it smells like nail polish because that means that wine is now rancid. It has gone bad. Okay. So you're looking for flaws in the wine through the taste in the nose before you actually pour a glass. Okay. And typically I read that like a sommelier will usually taste it themselves. Uh, usually a sommelier and nicer, depends on the restaurant. Okay. They will taste it beforehand to judge. But I tell people all the time, if you get that wine after the sommelier tastes it, because that has happened to me and mm-hmm. I taste it, I'm like, mm, this is corked. That means mm-hmm. the wine didn't get enough uh, contact with the cork in the bottle and something is wrong. And I'm like, you can taste it, but I'm not paying for that wine. I say, pull me another bottle. And usually they pull another bottle and the wine is fine. That second bottle is different. So you have to trust yourself enough to say, I know this one is not right. Right. Okay. So the ritual. So the ritual is. First thing you do is. Grab the glass by the stem. (laughs) Let's start there. Not by your hand, not on the bowl. Okay. Your hand I, holds you'll the see stem. Jay-Z holding that stem all the time. I oh, baby, when I saw Beyonce in that photo, I was just like, oh, she's she's by the stem. She's holding it by the and stem. And Jay-Z, too. He's got his eyes. I, I said, he clearly. stem. Yeah, he's always holding it by the stem. Okay. The stem, so, right? Okay. And what you're going to do is look for it. Look at the color. That's the first thing. That's the C, right? I'm looking mm-hmm. at this. I'm looking at the C, right? And then you put your nose in and you're smelling it. Okay. You're getting like, okay, what are the all flakes? All the way in the glass. No, all the way all in the, the glass. Way in the what, glass. What, what, what am I, what aromas that I'm smelling, right? Okay. And then you swirl it. How now, many swirls and how, how much? Okay. Depends on the wine. You're, you're basing it on what you smell the first time before you swirl it. Like, okay. how does this need to open? Big red wines, Cabernet, Zinfandel, need a little more time to open. That's why you a lot of places decant them and put them in an aerator thing. Okay. But if you're just, if they're not doing that, you're just like, oh, okay, it needs a little more air. Then you taste it. In that way, you decide what is going on. Do I want to taste this more? Does this need a little more time to open up a little more air once they pour it in? But okay. you're doing all that to determine the qualitative, like, do I actually want to drink this wine? Okay. Is this, can we be like, I just don't like this? Is that like? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Like, If you don't like it, then, and always ask for a taste. Before, like if you're not sure, okay, always ask the psalm, hey, can I get a taste before I order a glass? Nine times out of 10, they're going to say yes. Okay. Or what about a bottle? Because you, that's a, you're on the hook for the bottle, right? No, not necessarily. It, usually it, it depends on the wine. They might have it open. Okay. But for, so, usually for the bottle, I just expect to drink the bottle. That's me. I don't expect to like send the bottle back most of the time. Okay. But, you know, I always tell people, think about your budget when it comes to that. Are you mm-hmm. willing to be okay having the bottle? And you have to know the restaurant's policy because all restaurants have a different policy. I find the really nice restaurants, when you're ordering a, you know, a bottle of wine over $50, $60, you pretty much know what you're drinking. Yeah. You're not really trying to send that bottle back. You're just really not. 
<laughs> right. <laughs> okay. Yes. Okay. So we've, we've done our taste. We say, mm-hmm. okay, everything goes around before I get to like these, I want to do some pairings too. Mm-hmm. What I feel like this is something that I learned that may or may not be true. So let's just say everybody gets their glass. You're at a dinner mm-hmm. and, and they get ready to do the toast, you know, mm-hmm. where you get ready to clink glasses. Mm-hmm. There is a ritual there that is, I learned eye contact. Tech, yes. You and have to like, look somebody in the eye with you, when you toast with them. Okay. I feel like before this. So everybody, <laughs> everybody's glasses are poured. Mm-hmm. You do not sip until the every toast. Per- okay. every, you don't even sip. You don't toast until everybody's glasses is, are full. Then you toast and then you sip. Okay. So like you, just because your glass got poured, do not start sipping. Oh, do not. Do not. Okay. It's, it's bad decor. That's what I want to share. <laughs> and then as you're toasting, because I see there are people who know this and I feel like there are people who don't. And I do feel mm-hmm. like this is a part of these like fancier, I'm getting ready to ask for a big check dinners. You must make eye contact as you are toasting the person. Is that correct? Yes. It's considered a bad look if you don't. Okay. And so as I toast, I look at you, dink. I come yes. back. I look at the second person. I look at you in your eye. Mm-hmm. And then do I have to be looking at anybody as I sip or is it just at the tink as the, like, as the glasses touch? I as the, as the glasses touch, you make on time and you sip. It depends okay. on the size of the dinner, right? If you're right. at a round table, you may can't, you may want not, everybody's not standing and going over. Right. What I like to do is do the side toast. Okay. So I start to the right. I ting that person. They ting that other person and it goes around and everybody kind of looks at everybody. Oh, and that's then we drink. cute. Like a little yeah. domino toast. Like, a little domino toast. And everybody has a toast to somebody. And then. And then, we, and then we so take that we're not all like ding, 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 and knocking to... over you know candles or something <laughs> right just trying to get everybody mm-hmm. so okay that's important now I want to get into some food pairings because I think <sighs> this is also important mm-hmm. what is going to go I'm going to start with my my fish or shellfish what am I ordering with my 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 fish and shellfish if you like sparkling most sparkling wines go with shellfish, right? Okay. Shrimp, risotto, any, I know you made that this weekend. Yeah. Most sparkling goes with that. Actually, but I want, oh, 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 nice. I yes. want to say this as I like to teach people how to taste wine with food. Mm-hmm. I like to take a bite of the food, take a sip of the wine and let the wine coat the food. And now you understand why wine and food go together. Ooh. When you swallow the food, then taste the wine. Now the food has a lingering taste and the wine is covering that. You don't really understand why it went with this butter or cream or sauce. Yeah. So you take a small bite, an initial tiny bite, and then you take a sip of this wine. Allow it to coat and go, oh, because this is when wine changes food and food is changing wine. Yes. Okay. And this is why this whole pairing thing even... Oh yeah. <laughs> it's not just because they, they match. Okay. So no, usually going... you have to think what grows together goes together, right? Okay. This is when you go to France, Italy, you know, Greece, mm-hmm. you see Greece has amazing white wines because they have a lot of fresh fish. Right? right. And so you have these lighter style wines, right? For me, I love shellfish. I love Albarino, Pinot Grigio, Sauvignon Blanc, Sancerre, you know, beautiful. I love that with roasted chicken. Mm-hmm. I also like a beautiful, elegant, you know, not too much oak chardonnay. Okay. A okay. blanc de blanc champagne. I'm talking a rotisserie chicken from your local grocery store. Okay. Like, nothing <laughs> rotisserie trying. chicken from heck yeah from Publix with a from, blanc de blanc. Okay. Yes, or blanc de blanc were. or like Sauvignon Blanc, right? Something like okay. that. Um, when you're going into like think about black and salmon. You can literally do a white wine. You can do okay. something like I like going to Italy. I love Italian white wines. Okay. There is a grape called Perbacco. Mm. It is an Italian white from Abruzzo, Montepulciano. They're known for reds. Mm-hmm. I love that with black and salmon, but I also love Pinot Noir with black and salmon. Okay. All right. Now tell me reds. Red meat. I'm getting a steak. I'm getting a steak. <laughs> okay. You're I, getting a steak, right? Yeah. yeah right. You can get a, if you don't like Cabernet, you can get a Bordeaux blend. Mm, a Bordeaux blend. Blend. A Bordeaux blend. Right. Okay. Which, you you know, before um, the main grapes of Bordeaux, Malbec, Cabernet, Cabernet Franc, Petit Verdot, those grapes went in. You know, you can get that blend. That's why people like Malbec. Right. Yeah. Because a lot of Malbec goes with like steak. I mean, Argentina is known for it. So right. but if you want a Bordeaux blend, you can say, hey, if you're at a restaurant, I want a Bordeaux blend. That's less than 14, less than 13 percent alcohol. Okay. Most people on that 
Most Psalms love that. They love when you go to a restaurant, the Psalms love to ask they want to be asked questions. They yeah. want to So they're not they, trying to be intimidating. They no, want they're to re- be the majority I'm telling you the I'm nurse. gonna say they, they just want to be wine nurse. And the fact that you're like, I want a Bordeaux with this they're just they love the challenge, like, oh let me go yeah. into my cellar and see what I have. Okay. Like, right. Yeah. Also a burger, same thing. But if I'm ordering a burger, I my favorite thing is Laurent Perrier or Bill Cosamon rose champagne with a burger. Dang. Okay, I'm in. Rose uh, and fillet, pizza, pizza and pasta. What are what are we getting? Okay, are we doing a white pasta? White pasta and red pasta and yeah. So okay. white pizza, white pizza, like you know, one of those like I don't know, pesto or that's not white, but like okay. you know. But yeah. a lighter pizza, not the red sauce. Okay. White pasta, I like Chardonnay from Oregon. Okay. I love Chardonnay from Oregon. Why Oregon and not California or somewhere else? Somewhere else? Because I am specifically looking for Chardonnay from Oregon, from the Willamette Valley, and from – El- yeah, that, that part in Elo Amity Hills because they get really, really, really cold nights. And so for me, even if they have oak, it doesn't taste like a lot of butter. It doesn't taste mm. – and also it's just – it's just beautifully well made. So okay. I'm always like white pasta. Even if you're doing a white pizza with like artichoke and all that yeah, kind of yeah, stuff on it, I like. Yeah. Um, or I do a sunset. Yeah, sunset just the winner. Okay, I'm yes. doing a I'm doing a red so, pizza, pepperoni, something. Just if I'm doing pepperoni, I also like to go to Spain. I like Creon. I like Rioja for pepperoni mm. pizza. Mm. Or a lighter red from Italy. I'm sometimes like a sparkling lambrusco. Yes. For a, a red pizza, a red okay. pasta, or Nero Davola, which is okay. N-E-R-O, new word, D apostrophe, A-V-O-L-A. Okay. All right. And so before we wrap this up, because I feel like <laughs> you and I could just nerd we, out. Nerd out. Nerd out on wine. I want to talk about just like gifting wine. Mm-hmm. You know, what are some tips? Screw cap or no screw cap? I believe screw cap works. Depends on where you're getting it from. Mm-hmm. And I usually I tell people, screw crap is done very well in Australia, right? Australia and New Zealand have got the science down to make a perfect screw cap wine, right? Okay. Some parts of South Africa have that down in Cape Wild and Stellan, like they have it, right? You can go, okay. you can go get those runs. You, I think for a gifting point for wine, I like to go between thirty to forty five dollars. Okay. And I like to tell people to find a small independent wine store near them. Mm-hmm. that they can actually go in and actually tell a person, my friend drinks this. Yeah. And usually they're going to deduce like, okay, they, they like this, they like this, they like this, they like that. They don't like this. And they'll hand you something and always tell wine stores your price point. Do not let anybody intimidate <laughs> you and talk to you into this $70, $80 wine right. because they want to sell it. Right. And you're like, oh, well, I feel so bad. It must be great. No. no, no, just because a wine is expensive does not always mean it's great. <laughs> that part. There's so much that goes into price and in that mm-hmm. there are some good. Okay. Speaking of that, as we start to wind down, what are some of your like budget picks? Give me the, the budget pick wine glasses intro, not expensive. I want nice, decent wine glasses. Where- I always tell people to start at Crate and Barrel. Okay. I think Crate and Barrel has like universal glasses for like six, $7. Okay. Per, like start with four of those and ask for a universal. The reason I tell people to start with a universal, if you're not used to holding a wine by the stem mm. and you really want a thin stem, not a okay. thick stem, I'm going to say this, please quit kids. buying wine glasses at the dollar store. <laughs> and I understand this. Like I will tell you to buy a stemless glass over by the stem. If you have kids, I understand the whole kid or you're clumsy. Yeah. Kind of like, you know, yeah. Juliska makes really great plastic wine glasses if you like really like worried about it. But I like to go to Crate and Barrel. Okay. That way you're spending four dollars, five dollars. So you can say, okay, I like this universal. That means sparkling red, white. Any wine can go in that glass. Perfect. Okay. If you kind of want to up the game, mm-hmm. then you go into Riedel and you go to base level Riedel. That's usually called Vivant. You can find them in Marshalls, Target, R I E D E L. Right. Yes. We're talking Austrian crystal. This mm-hmm. is where we're going. Start in Riedel. If you're like an advanced drinker and you're like, I want to treat myself to a glass of, you know, beautiful. I love Mark Thomas and mm-hmm. Zalto. Same. But here's the thing. You got to pay the cost to be the boss you because do. those are $75 a stem. Yeah. 
I mean, I don't even let my husband drink out of those glasses. But here's the thing. (laughs) If you're hosting, somebody's cruising through and you got that big check ask and, you know, I've done this where people, everybody has to pass through Atlanta at least once. And it's like, you know Mm -hmm. what? Let me open something for you. I bring out my Mark Thomas. I bring out my Zaltos. (sighs) You put them down. And you're just like, it's just like, yes, I am her. <laughs> yes, I. it has elevated the wine game. Yeah. It has elevated the wine game immediately. Nothing's yeah. in the glass, but it's elevation. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing has touched the glass and you are Nothing. elevated. Okay, so we got our glasses. Mm-hmm. Now, I think something that I love is just these like easy wines that are easy to buy. So, I mean, not all of us are able to go to a wine shop. So let's just say we do have to run into the grocery store and we want to bring something that's, you know, to the boss's party or to something that we're trying to, you know, it's the first date, third date, 10th date. What are some like easy, good wines? First of all, I'm telling you to go to Spain and Portugal. Okay. Go to Spain and Portugal. We're talking really great wines and really great price points that you can find... In the grocery the, store. In the grocery look, store, right? Look for, look for those. Spain. Go to this. Spain, Portugal, go there okay. first. Okay. I highly advise, mm-hmm. and this is me, stay out of California. If you right. have to I was going to say that. I stay out of California. Okay. Stay out of California. I know. I love California, and I'm sure if people from California wine were like, oh, my God, Julia. No. <laughs> you got to spend some money in California to get a great wine. <laughs> You just classic, have to. Classic California. <laughs> classic California. <laughs> yeah. I need you to just go to Spain, okay. pick Albarino, look, and literally you can find a beautiful wine between 15 and $20 at the yeah. grocery store. Portugal the same way. After those two, then you go to Italy, then you go to France. Okay. And then I feel like I got to ask this last question before we go. <laughs> can, canned wine or not? Canned wine for you to drink with your friends and hanging out, not for a dinner party. Fair enough. All right, Julia. <laughs> I like canned wines. I, I write about canned wines. Yeah, canned wines, some canned wines hit. They hit, but they're not for a dinner party. They're not, they're not for dinner they're, party. They're, they're for fun, patio, sipping with the girl, c- c- friend came over, you yes. know, you got popping popcorn. Right. They are not, if we're talking about leveling up and elevation, and it's certain, certain yeah. levels to this, and they're, canned wine is not at the level of, it's not. They're great. I love them. And we'll keep drinking them. But no. But that not for what we're trying to do. Julia, thank you (laughs) you. for your time. That was the best time ever uh, nerding out over wine. Dude, tell us, is there anything? Where do we need to follow you? What can where can we learn more from you? Um, Newsletter. Give us a scoop. Okay, so uh, I um, I am at Julia Coney on all social media. I have a newsletter called Métier. And Métier in French means a study of things that one is good at. Mm. And so I write weekly about wines you should be drinking. And Mm. I feature one wine every week that you may not have heard of that is interesting. And I don't get into like the craziness. I just think that this wine this week is what you should be drinking. I also have travel guide for paid subscribers. It is $50 a year or $5 a month. And so I have a list been travel guide my champagne guide that my champagne that i go to four times a year will yeah. be launching next month on my newsletter so if you're planning a trip to champagne and you need help and you want to meet a lot of grower champagne people which we probably could have another class on that yes. and talk on that uh yeah so that's champagne guy but that is for paid subscribers because this way i get to write about things that i'm excited about for my newsletter and also i can you know i am going to be a contributing writer for a wine enthusiast in the spring so congrats okay. <laughs> yes, yes. It's in, uh, in, in addition to my american airlines work so yeah wait before you go what's the american airlines work for those that don't know for those who might be in the friendly skies not knowing I am the wine expert for American Airlines. So every wine on the plane in every lounge across the United States, I actually choose. Flex. (laughs) (laughs) All right. All right. That's it, Julia. We'll talk to you soon. All right. Thank you.